<coughs> in next 15 minutes i shall be talking about the insomnia and diabetes mellitus we all know about the diabetes mellitus talking about for last two days but insomnia is a thing which is largely neglected by many of us many of us consider it as a passive state is it really a passive state actually it is not sleep is a basic biological function and is essential for life i think nobody would disagree with this thing but it should always be considered as an active state that is critical for our physical mental and emotional well being many a times once we do not have adequate sleep or we have a defect in the quality of sleep it can result in metabolic errors and cardiovascular dysfunction sleep is an emotional issue and all diseases particularly chronic diseases like diabetes invite emotional reactions which can also affect sleep adversely many of times it is highly ignored in our lifestyle in our ancient times it was very well respected and honored but modern lifestyle has generated several diseases because of irregular sleep pattern in which type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disorder and are very well connected with the sleep disorders and they are occupying prime position in nowadays in human beings life all these three disorders are closely related and they are increasing each other once they are together and sleep always play an important role parallel to this is the rising prevalence of type 2 diabetes in our country and we cannot uh, Uh, we, we cannot deny that it may not be having the role of sleep irregularity in continuous rise in type 2 diabetes let's talk how does insomnia impact glucose metabolism as we all know that sleep is a metabolic regulator and sleep debt has harmful effects on carbohydrate metabolism there has been done in a study in which it has been proven that oral glucose challenge was higher in people those who had sleep deprivation for a longer time the people those who have been kept away for 60 hours or more they have been found to be having higher insulin response to their oral glucose challenge as compared to those who had their sleep pattern normal and it suggests that insulin resistant state is induced by the acute sleep deprivation chronically reduced sleep times are associated with obesity and it, once it is deprived the subjects develops the daytime sleepiness and have a tendency to overeat and eat fast many of the times it is seen that chewing tobacco smoking also drive away the sleep but are this factors for type 2 diabetes also there is somewhere somewhat relation with the lack of the sleep with type 2 diabetes chewing tobacco and smoking always remains there subject deprived of the sleep for several days or more become irritable fatigue unable to concentrate and usually disoriented i don't think anybody would disagree with this fact but considerable stress is generated out of this and as a result of this stress hormone like acth and cortisol are all highly secreted in early morning and they gets low in the late evening these effects result from a 24 hour cyclic alteration in the signals from the hypothalamus that cause cortisol secretion it has been demonstrated that glucose tolerance is markedly better in the morning than in the evening So chronic sleep restriction coupled with the eating contributes separately to the development of obesity and ultimately it may impact on the causation of diabetes also it is not uncommon to find nap pod in commercial organization where employees can take a power nap to boost their performance chronic sleep deprivation in young healthy volunteers has been reported to increase level of pro inflammatory cytokines decrease parasympathetic and increase the sympathetic tone it increases the blood pressure increases the cortisol level as well as elevate insulin and blood glucose level for all these reasons the shift workers always remain on the highest 
although shift work concept is good for the industry but it comes at a human cost shift workers are at heightened risk to a spectrum of illness it results in circadian rhythm disruption shift work can have deleterious effects on metabolic equilibrium and can precipitate diabetes particularly genetically prone subjects due to chronic sleep deprivation data from the sleep heart health study indicate that people sleeping 6 hours or less and those sleeping 9 hours or more per night have a higher prevalence of type 2 diabetes and impaired glucose tolerance this is in comparison to people sleeping 7 to 8 hours per night even after those with insomnia symptoms are excluded suggesting that voluntary sleep restriction may account for some of the public health burden associated with type 2 diabetes now talk about obstructive sleep apnea which is again a very important risk factor for the metabolic disorder among the sleep disorders obstructive sleep apnea insomnia sleep deprivation excessive sleepiness and restless leg syndrome have an impact on the glucose metabolism Or obstructive sleep apnea appears to have the strongest association with these metabolic disorders. In clinical practice, detailed sleep sleep is often not recorded. Detection and treatment of sleep disorders in diabetes is essential since their treatment is highly rewarding. So we can see it here that high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity—they all are generated through the sleep apnea. if sleep apnea is there here you can see in this particular picture that difference of the normal air flow and sleep apnea you can see that wide airway is providing the normal flow of the oxygen and keeping the heart healthy on the other hand if there is a sleep apnea then oxygen supply is less and it keeps our heart always in the stress so sleep disorder breathing is a spectrum of disorder which consists of snoring upper airway resistance syndrome and sleep apnea it can be obstructive central or mixed must be appreciated that obstructive sleep apnea is a risk factor for the development of hypertension ischemic heart disease diabetes and stroke habitual snoring predicts the onset of diabetes there has been <clears throat> an study in which it was seen that people those who have sleep and sleep related disorders 21.1% have the difficulty in initiation of sleep 21.9% are having the difficulty in maintaining sleep and 12.2% have the excessive daytime sleepiness although difficulty in initiating sleep and difficulty in maintaining sleep are not very much different in the occurrence the sleep complaints are often related to the presence of underlying sleep disorder breathing which many a times is not well appreciated neither by patient nor by the doctors nocturia physical complications of the disease and underlying depression also many a times sir, these things are responsible for uh, irregular sleep responsible for midnight awakening and they produce the person in the sleep disorder polysomnography done in diabetic subjects revealed poor wakefulness a high number of the awakening and fragmented sleep let's see how does it works with the insulin resistance patients with sleep apnea had significantly higher level of fasting plasma insulin and glucose level than their obese control so even if the people those who are obese they may not be having as much as high plasma insulin or level as it may occur with the sleep apnea sick also the group with sleep apnea demonstrated a high degree of visceral but not subcutaneous fat compared to their obese control there is repetitive pharyngeal collapse in sleep in sleep resulting in cyclical hypoxemia cyclical hypertension and release of stress hormones and catecholamine nocturnal symptoms like <clears throat> uh many a times apnea choking dyspnea restlessness diaphoresis or excessive sweating acid reflux drooling somnolence prominent frequent changes of the posture in the sleep and sometimes people are not able to sleep supine they have got the bruxism also while sleeping 
So all these symptoms may be associated with obstructive sleep apnea as well as as a result of the cyclical hypoxemia which is occurring out of the obstructive sleep apnea. In diabetic subjects, there is often postprandial drowsiness is seen with a poor concentration, fatigue and depression. Therefore, symptoms can be confusing and misleading. Low chart, this is showing the close association of sleep deprivation with sleep apnea and type 2 diabetes mellitus. I would like to have your attention on the sleep disorder breathing and obstructive sleep apnea. How does it regulate so many disorders around the human beings and its life that it's not only producing the apneic activity which is responsible for cyclical hypoxia in the night which leads to increased sympathetic activity and rise in the catecholamine and cortisol level. The same thing is coming up from the modern lifestyle which is generating rise stress and stress is leading to the obesity. Many a times in depression also the people eat more and it also contributes with the obesity and this obesity is again is associated with the sleep deprivation, nocturia, sleep fragmentation, insomnia and it is adding up with the stress. On the other hand, we can see that all these things once those who are giving rise to the high level of the catecholamine and cortisol, they are putting up the high stress on the metabolic system, producing insulin resistance and leading to the occurrence of diabetes. Sympathetic stimulation is connected with the insulin resistance or we can say decreased insulin sensitivity. It results in release of the stress hormone and catecholamine. And once these effects are known to decrease the insulin sensitivity and worsening of the group stop, there is strong possibility that changes in sympathetic nervous system activity, corticotropic function and systemic inflammation are associated with subjects with short sleep duration, insomnia, thereby causing metabolic dysfunction. Patients who are sleep deprived often exhibit fast eating and binge eating which adversely affect glycemic status and digestion. In obstructive sleep apnea, there is excessive release of the stress hormone, catecholamine, cortisol, that cause the Cushing-like disease. Nocturnal excessive cortisol and catecholamine secretion can also spill over in the daytime. That is called as spillover effect and it results in the fasting hyperglycemia. Hypothyroidism can be associated with obstructive sleep apnea. Daytime tiredness and sleepiness can be confused with hypothyroidism. Administration of the thyroxine without treating obstructive sleep apnea can precipitate cardiovascular events in sleep due to cyclical hypoxemia, particularly when in REM sleep. So there is a potential mechanism which is linking the sleep apnea to the glucose intolerance. Once a fragmented sleep is there or inter intermittent hypoxemia is there, it is not only causing the sympathetic activation, increasing the catecholamine level, but it also leads to the high level of the cortisol. It increases the reactive oxygen species, inflammatory markers by activating the inflammatory pathway, and it induces the leptin and reduces the adiponectin level. And all these are the prerequisites for the development of the insulin resistance, and it causes the pancreatitis beta cell dysfunction ending up with the glucose intolerance and type 2 diabetes. There has been a study in which the sleep duration and risk of type 2 diabetes has been studied in a meta-analysis of prospective study. And it has been found that there is a U-shaped relationship. Those response relationship was observed between sleep duration and risk of type 2 diabetes with the lowest risk observed at a sleep duration category of 7 to 8 hours per day. Compared with 7 hours sleep duration per day, the pooled relative risk for type 2 diabetes was 1.09 with a 95% confidence oh, interval sir. ranging between 1.04 to 1.15 for each 1 hour shorter sleep duration among individuals slept. So what we could find that 7 to 8 hours is the ideal duration of the sleep. 
let's come over to the conclusion of the talk both short and long sleep duration are associated with a significantly increased risk of type 2 diabetes underscoring an importance of appropriate sleep duration in the delay or prevention of type 2 diabetes there is a close relation between sleep circadian rhythm obesity insulin resistance hypertension cardiovascular disorder which needs to be dissected and managed there is evidence to show sleep disorders such as obstructive sleep apnea insomnia short or long term sleep duration and restless leg syndrome are potential risk factors for insulin resistance glucose intolerance type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome thank you for your kindness